Hey, what's up? This is Laidback Luke, DJ and producer, Kung Fu athlete, and dedicated dad. How often is it that you're watching a tutorial and there's all these words popping up and you have no clue what it means? Today, I'll explain to you what a lot of those words are. This vlog is airing on the Friday, which means I have my show in LA tonight at Academy. If you are seeing this in time, make sure to check the link below to grab your last minute tickets. And speaking of shows, my number one show from last year was at Perucaville Festival. My Mix Mash record label hosted the stage last year and we're back for this year. I am super excited. Make sure to check out our trailer and the full lineup announcement for this year right below. If you missed last week's vlog, it was an in my mind techno set so you could see how I would mix techno as we did in the late 90s and I'll come back to you after this. So shout out to AMP Techno, Preston, I see you on the number one comment and Johnny Deep with the number two comment and it's fascinating because I saw a lot of these type of comments coming by in the comments and I want to explain you something. The DJs I fell in love with in the 90s, big legendary techno names like Jeff Mills, Dave Clark, Frankie Bones were all very known for their incredible DJ skills. In the 90s, this resulted to a lot of cutting up, fast mixing, three deck mixing, scratching in techno. This is how I acquired my DJ skills and this is what I'd love to continue doing. And you, my dear viewers, maybe you've gone into techno like the last five years or the last 10 years and you have no clue that this is a part of history. I'd like for you to know that doing less actually doesn't have anything to do with actual DJ skill. But I do agree without missing that flow that techno needs to have. So there's a really good challenge. And so don't be fooled by people that are mixing slow that didn't have the ability to properly develop their mixing skills. Let's keep real DJing and hardworking DJs alive. Okay, so time for producer terminology. Usually people don't even explain what this is. Get ready to make some notes because I'll be going through it really fast. First up though, my amazing show in Czech Republic at Magnetic Festival. start of the vlog this week. This was my show in Prague at Magnetic Festival. Absolutely one of the biggest parties in Europe and what an amazing indoor festival. In Prague I also had a good time with Mr. Magnetic John Cutler. A lot of people don't know but John is very much into the fitness and he has trained with Frank Zane so his training methods are awesome to experience and so this was yesterday and I still I still feel the, the muscle ache from it. Right now we are in a hotel room in Portugal. I'm getting ready for my show in Portugal in a couple of hours, which gives me just enough time to record this for you. 15 producer terminology that you probably encounter as you start beginning to produce. You'll hear this one a lot and what is it exactly? And some people tell you not to use it, but what is it? In a synthesizer, when you roll down the menu of the sounds, you see all the sounds there and they are pre-made for you to use and these are called presets. Now some people confuse these with the sounds that are in sample packs. The sounds in sample packs are actually not presets and I'll tell you more in a little bit. You will come across this too. Sometimes people will say, oh, uh, make it a little bit more dry or make it a little bit more wet. And especially in Ableton, you have this knob on a lot of plugins, which makes you alter the influence this plugin has on your sound. So when the parameter is all the way up to 100% and it's 100% wet, this means the effect on the sound has fully taken over from the original sound. And when the sound is fully dry, it means the effect has no influence on the original sound. Simply put, wet is the full on effect over your sound and dry is a no effect over your sound. Effects and effects. What is the difference exactly? Well, effects are usually the special effects you use in a track. For instance, big sub impacts or maybe some sweeps. These could also be little vocal chops or crashes. All terminology I could explain as well, but my time is limited, so we're just gonna roll on. So those are effects. Effects, on the other hand, are a reverb, compression, 
delays, phase, chorus, what we just spoke about in the dry wet, the plugins that you can put on your sound to alter that sound, that's an effect. Some people in the production process might ask you, oh, put this in a loop. And when you put something in a loop, you take a section of your track and putting it in a loop means it'll just go round and round infinitely. Loops, on the other hand, often spoken about in sample packs are uh, pieces of pre-made beat that you can put into your track. And they are called loops because sometimes they're one bar or two bar long. And when you loop those, you can use them throughout your track. Where did you get this sample from or where did you get that sample from? Previously, samples would be just a little section of music you actually stole from an existing track. You just cut the one little bit of audio out and you used it in your track and we would say, oh, that's a sample. Nowadays, a sample can also be a, a little sound or a little piece of music you took from a sample pack. But a sample is always just a little piece of sound that you use in your music. You could also be getting questions about automation and automation is the ability to draw what the knobs are doing in your DAW. For instance, if you have a sound and you want to make it more dry wet throughout a build, then this knob movement you can possibly record. But what I always do is I just draw them out. And this little line is called the automation. In most DAWs, you can apply this to every knob you see on the screen. And a DAW, by the way, is the program you use for making music. This is a track or strip within your DAW where you have the ability to program your notes. And these notes you'll need to have for your drum machines or for your synthesizers. MIDI is basically a digital notation of where you have pressed the keyboard and on which timing. And next to the MIDI tracks you can use audio as well. Audio tracks in your DAW and this is a, a strip or a track where you can put vocals in, for instance, acapellas, basically anything that's a waveform that you don't want to throw in a sampler, a longer piece of audio as well. This you can use in the audio tracks. Now the master channel might sound fancy, but it's nothing more than your end output of your DAW. All the channels or all your tracks route out to the master channel, and this is the end point of where your signal of the track comes out from. And a master chain is a chain of plugins that you have on your master channel, which manipulates your sound. Usually it consists of a compressor, EQ, maybe another compressor, a limiter, which you can add on or leave out whatever sounds good to you. Just make sure the limiter is last in the chain. But if someone asks you, hey, what do you have on your master chain? You'll know that it's the, the plugins you use on your master channel. Stems. If you didn't see my vlog from two weeks ago, make sure to check it out. That's all very important when you're doing collabs, but it's basically a render of every track or channel strip that you use in your DAW for your track. Mind you, stems are usually as long as the whole track and a stem could be a collection of all the drums you are using throughout your whole track or a strip of vocals you are using throughout your whole track. BPM, a very important thing, uh, if you're a DJ as well, is uh, what's the beats per minute of your track? 126 BPM sounds like this. 100 BPM sounds like this. And the kind of BPM is an integral part of what kind of genre or what kind of music you are making. I want you to learn about EQ as well, because sometimes uh, people can come up to you and say, oh, this is a good track, but it needs more bass. So where does bass actually sit? This is an EQ and you can throw it onto any track or any channel in your DAW. And within there, if you tweak the, the left side of the EQ, you can add more bass. If you tweak the right side of the EQ, you can add more high end to your mix. And if you're tweaking the middle part of your EQ, you're actually adding some mid EQ into your sound or your track. So now when someone tells you, oh, it needs a bit more bass, you can just grab the EQ and tweak it. So much terminology. I have one more left in this vlog, but first I want to take you out to my show out here in Portugal and I'll get right back to you. And I'll actually be talking about pitch because it has a little bit of a longer explanation. You'll see.
awesome time in Portugal. It's been years as well since I was back in Portugal. It was really good to see a loyal crowd that traveled out for uh, hours to drive out to my show. Thank you very much for coming out. So this leaves me with the last thing I wanted to talk to you about in this vlog. It's pitch. Now when you're DJing and someone talks about the pitch, they are actually talking about the pitch bend, which actually works in conjunction with the BPM. And so pitch in DJing is usually all about the tempo. Yet the pitch while you are producing has all to do with the key that the track is in. Simply put, shifting notes up and down adjusts the, the pitch of a tone or a track or a note. Man, there's so many things I could talk about, so many things I could explain. I could even make a volume two or three of these type of series. If you like that, make sure to hit me with that like button. Hit me that subscribe button as well. And obviously, if you would like to explain some things, make sure to leave it in the comments below. Next week, more of a DJ type of tutorial. This time, I'm gonna explain the proper use of FX. How to use them, when to use them, what to use, Make sure to tune back in next week. Until then, L's up, rave safely, and salute.